All right, uh, perfect. So yeah, I have a bit of a long title for my talk, but uh, I want to slowly work through it. So I'm going to be talking about performing multi-scale couple simulations with precise in an adaptive and flexible way. So basically, how does one do multi-scale simulations if one wants to use precise? How do they work and what needs to be done? Uh, as Marcus said, uh, I'm working at the IPVS of University of Stuttgart and also I'm part of SimTech uh, at the same university. I want to start by talking a bit, uh, going through some examples of multi-scale couple simulations. So to bring a bit into perspective of what are the challenges and how do I want to address them. So the first figure on the top left is a, essentially a muscle simulation. So on the left, you see a physiological illustration uh, of a muscle and uh, different scales on it. And then you have a computational domain in that muscle when you want to simulate it, and then there is a model structure. So this is typically the levels at which you will see things uh, when multi-scale couple simulations are involved. So there is, uh, in the case of the muscle, you'll have a structure simulation, then like an electromyographic simulation where you simulate different fibers and you connect it back to the bigger scale. This is also similar for other biomechanical or other models. So on the right-hand side, you see a a multi-scale scenario of the human liver, so where you have an organ scale, and if one looks a bit deeper into this organ scale, there is a lobule scale, so physics can be defined on a smaller scale, and one can even go further from the lobule scale into the cell scale. So there are different physics happening at different scales, which can be resolved in a different manner and also connected to each other. And the last figure, uh, maybe familiar from the slide of Mattis, uh, so it's a poor classic porous media example where you have a macro domain uh, which on which if you zoom in, there is a microstructure and this microstructure can typically be resolved by a certain microstructure solved again and again. So essentially we end up in such multi-scale simulation scenarios with having these different levels which can be coupled to each other. So the understanding is that doing only these macro simulations are not enough we need to solve some micro simulations, we need to resolve these lower scales, extract some properties, put them back into the macro scale and then resolve the macro scale to get a better idea or a full understanding of the system. And that's where the coupling comes into play. So you essentially then end up with different physics on different scales which you want to couple. So now if one thinks of this coupling and thinks that, okay, I want to use precise, so I want to do it in a partition black box manner, then there are some aspects which uh, restrict you from using it and also uh, kind of point to some solutions. So typically such multi-scale scenarios have a one-to-many uh, coupling. So you have one macro simulation, uh, again if you refer to the figures on the right, so you have one macro domain and you have many micro simulations which you want to couple to that macro domain. Uh, if you think of this a bit more from the perspective of precise, this starts to get a bit complicated. For example, uh, one would have, so on the macro side, maybe things are a bit easier because a macro simulation needs to be coupled to something else via precise, so that would be a normal precise coupling, which would involve calling some API commands of precise in the macro code, and then that part would be done. But what about the micro simulations? So if one starts to think that, okay, I will start defining participants for the micro simulations, then for a bigger scenario where you have about a thousand or tens of thousands of micro simulations, one would need to define all as individual participants of precise, which is quickly it gets out of hand. Another important thing is also that when you have such micro simulations, uh, if you look at how precise works, how precise does the data mapping and how, how it handles the coupling, it needs to have spatial information about these micro simulations in the macro perspective. So precise needs to know that, okay, if I have certain quantities which I want to map or send to the other side, I need to put them on a mesh somewhere. But if you then think of these micro simulations, they themselves do not have a notion of space because they are individual simulations which one needs to resolve. So this also needs to be handled somehow. Um, and for these multi-scale scenarios, it's uh, very often seen that running all these micro simulations is far too expensive and computationally inefficient. Uh, people rarely do this. So there is some adaptivity and also some load balancing involved. So one would solve only a few micro simulations to get a good enough understanding of the micro scale, upscale all this information on the macro scale, and then solve it. So 
then this adaptivity and load balancing would need to be implemented into precise or or hacked into precise in some way. So using precise as it is for such scenarios gets uh, complicated very fast. And this is exactly where my work comes in. So what we are suggesting is to use a new software component along with precise called the micromanager. So what is the micromanager? Uh, it's a software which controls several micro simulations and then couples them to one macro simulation via precise. So now, uh, again, I want to talk based on the figure on the right hand side. So you now have one macro simulation which will talk to precise, but on the other side, you will no longer have multiple micro simulations, but one micro manager which will control all these micro simulations and that would become one participant. So you essentially end up with a one to one uh, coupling as far as precise is concerned. So how would this micromanager look and what it should do or what its capability should be for such a successful simulation? So first is, um, as I already said, adaptive initialization of micro simulations. So uh, we never, almost never want to run all the micro simulations, so we would need to activate and deactivate micro simulations. Uh, depending on whether they are similar counterparts exist. So some similarity calculation would need to be done to determine if micro simulations are similar to each other and if the criterion is satisfied then some simulations are deactivated and only the activated ones are solved. Uh, this would also come along with a copy operation where you would copy the s data from an active simulation to its most similar deactivated one, and then you would create a field of micro data which would then be passed on to precise. So this type of adaptivity would need to be there. As soon as you have adaptivity and as soon as you solve it in parallel, uh, it would also create a load imbalance. So if you imagine that now you're solving all these micro simulations on different ranks, uh, if you're using uh, distributed computing and you're running your simulation in parallel, uh, it could very well happen that a few ranks end up having a part of the domain where uh, the physics is not changing too much over time and hence you have a lot of deactivated micro simulations in that part and other parts have way too many active micro simulations. So such load imbalance would uh, then hamper parallel scalability. So ideally the micro manager should do some form of dynamic load balancing uh, to handle the adaptivity as well. And the third part which uh, kind of goes into the uh, direction of the philosophy of precise is the application agnostic design. So we do not want, uh, the intention is not to design these micro simulations for multi-scale simulations in porous media or biomechanical simulations, but something really general which uh, users can use uh, for their application uh, without having to do a lot more. So, yeah. Um, as, as Marcus already showed in his uh, introductory talk, uh, you can already check out the micromanager. So it's, uh, I've already been developing it in open source. Uh, I've done some beta releases of it and I've also written up some documentation. So that's the GitHub link. It's part of the precise project on GitHub. Uh, please feel free to check it out. So this is basically the concept of uh, the micromanager that we want to do. And now I will sh want to show uh, how far we have got uh, with this. So. This is a bit of content heavy slide, but uh, yeah, uh, this is the example that I have been working on for quite some time now. So this is essentially a two scale heat conduction example where we solve it using precise plus the micromanager. So you have this, is my cursor visible? Yeah, okay. Uh, so you have this rectangular domain on which essentially solve a heat conduction problem. Uh, it has adiabatic boundary conditions on all sides and except for a kind of Dirichlet constant condition here, which is a sink. So uh, at starting from an initial state, uh, a kind of low concentration would sweep through the domain. That's the uh, physics that we are solving. And it's assumed that at kind of on the, along with this macro problem, there is a microstructure existing uh, for this problem. So the microstructure is uh, something of a grain packed up in a different material. So you have essentially, the, you understand that the micro uh, structure is made up of two materials. One is kind of the packing material on the side and one is the grain. And the grain is dependent on what the concentration of the macro side. So the macro problem is then the simple heat uh, equation essentially which needs to be solved. 
except the difference is that we, um, we don't know the conductivity. So because we don't know the material that is being uh, used, so we don't know the conductivity value. To get this, we need to solve a certain micro simulation. So we don't know the conductivity and we also don't know the porosity, which is the relative amount of both the materials which exist. Similar to this, the micro problem uh, involves two equations. Uh, the first is the allen kahn phase field equation. So this uh, is used to calculate the phase field, which is the mathematical representation of this grain. So the grain, is, it's a circular grain which expands or contracts, and the uh, phase field helps you to uh, resolve the grain kind of in a mathematical way and use it. So the allen kahn equation uh, is quite a well-known equation to resolve this. This equation has the T, which is uh, yeah, temperature or concentration, which comes from the macro side. So the evolution of the grain is uh, kind of artificially linked to the quantity on the macro scale. Along with that, you have the second equation, which is, again, the heat equation, but in a homogenized form, which needs to be solved to get the conductivity. So the micro problem is solved, and then an upscaling needs to be done. An upscaling is essentially a uh, kind of an averaging of quantities. So you solve integrals to get quantities, which would then be sent to the macro scale. So the figure on the right shows uh, the macro domain and at each Gauss point. So we are solving this using the finite element method. So on each Gauss point, you have a micro simulation, which is solved in every time step. And here, I think I've scaled it with conductivity. So if the concentration reduces, the size of the grain reduces, and the grain is more conductive than the other material, and hence the conductivity is expected to drop. And that's what you kind of see here. So. This is an example case. Uh, it's also, uh, the repository is available. I, I think I've shared the link later on, but I can also show. So this is one of the test cases we started working with to show the working of the micromanager. Um, in the figure on the top, all the micro simulations are running. So there is no adaptivity involved. But the figure below uh, shows uh, some form of adaptivity working. Here, the simulations which are, um, whiter, may, maybe not the best color combination, but yeah, simulations which are whiter uh, are the ones which have been active the most over the course of the simulation, and the simulations which are black have been least active or not active at all over the course of the simulation. So you see that on the left part of the domain was the Dirichlet condition which propagates into the domain, and hence more activity happens on this part of the domain, but on the right side, we see that Less activity happens because things don't change that much until the propagation is reached to that point. Uh, one thing I want to note here is that um, th this here, so there is a line of active micro simulations here, which uh, one would not expect uh, in this situation. This is because currently we, so this example is run in parallel and we calculate the adaptivity within a rank. So we decompose the domain and the adaptivity calculations, so where you calculate which simulations are similar to each other and not, is done only within the domain of the rank. So ideally, one would also do this globally. So one would compare all micro simulations to each other, so do kind of a serial operation, and then propagate this information back to the ranks. So this is yet to be implemented. Uh, as we do things on the per rank, exactly at this edge, the domain gets decomposed, and hence, the ranks to the right of the, of the domain have no knowledge of the inactive simulations on the left side or the active ones on the further left side, and hence, some of them have to be activated so that the next ones can be deactivated. But this is an artifact of the implementation and not uh, really the best result that we can get. So, so basically, yeah, this example shows uh, what we have done, uh, we have been able to do so far uh, with the simulation and with the micromanager. I just want to quickly uh, step through uh, what one would need to do if one has to use the micromanager. So let's say you have an application. Uh, I was very happy uh, earlier in the day when it, during the introduction, at least I think three to four people said that they want to use the micromanager. So uh, what would be the steps if one says that, okay, now I have, I have a macro simulation and a micro simulation, which are completely uh, independent of each other, but I want to couple them in this multi-scale setting. So step one is pretty straightforward. You have to modify your macro code uh, by adding precise API calls. So that's the normal coupling to precise uh, that we also did as part of the course and what we do usually. The step two is where uh, the specific things start. So we need to change the micro code in a way that the micromanager can control it. And for this, the micro code needs to be changed into a library. 
So it needs to be changed into a library with a particular class name and also names of particular functions. So these names have been standardized. So this essentially is a micro simulation API. If you look from the perspective of the micromanager, this is done because the micromanager will get access to this file and will try to call uh, the particular class, create its object, and then call functions of this object using standard names. So the names have been kept as standard as possible, like initialize, solve, and some for checkpointing if you want to do implicit coupling in this whole setting. So this is uh, one important modification that needs to happen to the microcode. Along with that, uh, some modifications to the precise configuration need to be done. So this is mainly uh, because the micromanager doesn't have its own output functionality. So if you, you want to output data from the micromanager, you essentially write data to precise, and then precise export functionality is used to output the data. So one could argue that we could have written export uh, functionality for the micromanager itself, but the micromanager will never be used in standalone state. It will always be used with precise, and hence we can rely on the export functionality of precise to not reinvent the wheel. One more thing that's a bit critical is uh, the direct mesh access functionality that uh, Marcus showed in his presentation is used uh, here. So the micromanager doesn't really have a mesh of its own because it just controls a group of micro simulations. So it doesn't need to have its own mesh, own coupling mesh. It needs the coupling mesh from the macro side. So we use the direct mesh access functionality that we uh, have in Precise since a year to access the macro mesh and then at each point of this macro mesh, we define a micro simulation. So we need to do this. Uh, so these are the modifications that are required to the precise configuration file in the coupling. Uh, the participants would still be only two, the macro participant and the micro manager. In addition to this, uh, so I, I won't step into all the options here, but basically the micro manager has its own configuration file because some information needs to be given directly to the micro manager. So uh, you have, for example, the micro file. So you need to give the name of the file which has the uh, functions or the script for the micro simulation. So here it's, it's a generic placeholder name. So this allows the micro manager to go and find the file. So it's not only a file, but you can also give a path here if the file is located at some other place. Similarly, you need to give the path to the precise configuration, the name of the macro mesh, and the quantities which can be read and written from which are read and written from the micromanager. So this um, has have been done in the form of Python dictionaries, where the name or the key of the keys of the dictionary are the names of the files, uh, name of the quantities, and the values are whether the quantity is a scalar or vector. So this kind of gives the information to the micromanager that okay, what quantities are going to come from precise, which are essentially the macro quantities, and what need to go back uh, to precise. Okay. Uh, along with this, uh, we also need uh, to have some uh, adaptivity parameters. So adaptivity is not mandatory. Uh, if one decides for testing purposes, they want to run only, they want to run all the micro simulations, they do not want to do the similarity calculation, then that's also fine. One can say adaptivity equal to false, and then the micromanager will just not do the adaptivity calculation. But if it is true, then several quantities need to be defined. The first is the adaptivity data. So the micromanager needs to know which data to use uh, to calculate if two micro simulations are similar or not. So the data can be the data coming in from the macro state. So the macro data which goes into the micro simulations, it can be the data which comes out of the micro simulations in the past time step, or it can be also the state of the micro simulations themselves. So this data, so the data names have to obviously be all the either of the names that you have given above. So these names with these data will then be used to calculate if two micro simulations are similar to each other or not. There are these three parameters, so the history parameter, the coarsening constant, and the refining constant. So these uh, are uh, three constants which need to be tuned for the adaptivity. Uh, I, I won't go into super details here, but these three are uh, pretty well known for such adaptivity calculations. They are from the uh, paper of Redeker and Eck. So uh, in the documentation, you find uh, details on what these parameters mean and how to tune them. So uh, there are some recommended values, but some tuning is near necessary depending on what behavior you want to see for the adaptivity. 
Uh, the last setting for the adaptivity is this adaptivity every implicit iteration. So this is important if you want to do this adaptivity and you are doing implicit coupling. So here in implicit coupling, you can decide if the micromanager calculates the adaptivity at the start of the time window, but that then does not recompute the adaptivity for each implicit iteration, or the micromanager really com recomputes the adaptivity in each implicit iteration. So we offer both these variants. Uh, we are studying if both these variants uh, do make a difference and what are their implications to the simulation. So we don't know uh, whether either of these two is better than the other, or is this case dependent or not. But uh, for now, these options are available to use. In addition to this, there are some diagnostics output. So uh, if one wants to output some things, uh, just to see how they work. So if one is debugging or testing this mentally scale simulation, then you can add things to the diagnostics here and then also add them as export functionality to precise so that they will be outputted into the VTK, VTU, or whatever file you have, and then you can go and check them there. So this is pretty useful if uh, everything runs through, but yeah, you're still not seeing the results that you want to see. So this, uh, basically this configuration and also the API I shown before, this is still uh, work in progress. So we are still doing zero point releases of the micromanager. This is by no means a final API that we are going to float, but we will only know about this. Uh, we will only get a better understanding of this when we have uh, users who will use this. So yeah, I, I'm happy to see that some people are interested in this and look forward to talking to them. Um, I want to quickly end uh, with a status quo and upcoming features. So what the manager can do right now. So it runs in parallel with MPI. It can adaptively control micro simulations on a per rank basis. So this global adaptivity is yet to be done, but on a per rank basis, it can do it. And it can output diagnostics, which is configurable. So you can really debug your simulations. Uh, what are the upcoming features? So the, up the immediate future, the micromanager will be able to adaptively control micro simulations globally. It will be able to control micro simulations uh, written in different languages. So if you look at the API, it's, this is currently in Python. So the micromanager is written in Python and it can control micro simulations in Python right now. But we are working, so I'm working with uh, Eric Scheurer to write an API for C and C++ so that uh, users have the freedom to write micro simulations in the languages that they want. And uh, the eventual far future plan is also to have some form of dynamic load balancing. Uh, yeah, lastly, uh, if you are interested in using the micromanager or you want more information about it or in general doing multi-scale couple simulations with precise, please reach out to me or talk to me over the next few days. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ishan. So which questions do you have? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. How did you make it run in, in, in parallel? So let's assume that the macro is, 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 is not divided, but uh, like, like it's just in, in serial. The micro, how it gets shared? The, like I, I look to your code right now. Yes. I see the initialization was done serially. Uh, yes. So uh, repeat the question, please. Yes. So essentially, the question is. Uh, if, even if the macro simulation is done in serial, how are the micro simulations done in parallel? So how does the micro manager is able to do them in parallel with MPI? So uh, it's actually if, uh, so the micro simulations don't talk to each other, right? There is no communication between them. So the key here is to convert the micro simulations into libraries, because as soon as you do that, then the micro, the micro manager is free to uh, kind of put them on different processes and run them and then collect it and 
give them to the macro side. Uh, and the power of precise is that you can do this, you can run the micro simulation, in, uh, the micro manager in parallel and the macro uh, code in serial, and precise takes care of the communication between the two. Yes. Uh, yes, so the the micro simulations, uh, yes, you, I mean, running the micro simulation itself in parallel is something that uh, we have not done yet. So that's something that we want to do, exactly. So you run micro simulations in parallel, not the micro simulation in parallel. So, okay, so yeah. exactly. Parallel, yes, so. Yeah, so that's one thing that we want to test uh, in the near future is to have, so for example, give uh, one node of, uh, give different several nodes or to the micromanager and within these nodes, the ranks or the processes would be then used in a parallel sense for the micro simulations. So yeah, that's something we want to do. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I think that, that that is an assumption we are making to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, but, but maybe we can we can discuss this more. Yeah, if it's, yeah. They may be both concerned variables, but also they depend on the history where the exactly might have been related by the same from an A perspective. Yeah, but, but let, let's discuss this in the interest of time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry. To, yeah. to <laughs> To be fair to everyone, uh, thank you very much, Ishan. Uh,